Welcome to the 2017-18 NCAA Men's Basketball Coaches Summer Training Video. This is J.D. Collins, NCAA National Coordinator of Men's Basketball Officiating. Art Hyland, Secretary Rules Editor, and I have created this video on behalf of the Rules Committee. The Rules Committee met early in May to discuss the rules for the upcoming season. This is a rules change year and the Rules Committee took action on several items that we would like to share with you. The purpose of this video is to make you aware of the rules changes and or interpretations so that you can teach your players during the off season. First and foremost, the Rules Committee has directed the National Coordinator to continue the enforcement of the directive to reduce physicality to create freedom of movement. Officials will continue their efforts to reduce physicality by calling fouls on illegal actions involving hand checking body bumping the ball handler, freedom of movement for cutters, and screening. The Rules Committee specifically asked the officiating community to continue the directive to reduce physicality to create freedom of movement with focus on post play, rebounding, and offense initiated contact. The Rules Committee also ask officials to be diligent in calling the rules as written. Additional focus will be given to traveling, especially on the perimeter and in the post, screens, especially wide screens, hook and hold plays or arm lock plays, and enforcement of the coach's box and unsporting behavior. We will now look at some specific post plays. We will emphasize calling the first foul in the post and particularly offensive straight arm ward offs, displacement of an opponent, and swim strokes by the offense and the defense. Let's look at some plays. Number 25 white uses his left straight arm to ward off number 21 black. The official correctly calls an offensive foul on number 25 white. Offensive players are allowed to post up with elbows bent. There will be additional emphasis on the offensive straight arm ward off in 2017-18. Number 20 white displaces number 34 black by backing him down the lane. The official correctly calls an offensive foul on number 20 white. When a player displaces an opponent, a foul should be called. Number 13 White established legal post-up position with his elbows bent. Subsequently, number 13 White moves his body and arms into number 3 Blue and displaces him. The official correctly calls an offensive foul on number 13 White. Number 3 White establishes legal position in the post. Number four blue lays on number three white and then uses an upward swim stroke. The official correctly calls a defensive foul on number four blue. Number 44 white establishes legal position in the post. Number 44 blue uses his right arm to swim stroke number 44 white. This is a foul and should have been called on number 44 blue. As a reminder, a defensive post player may use a forearm in the back of an offensive post player with or without the ball. As long as equal pressure is being applied and there is no displacement by either player. A post player is an offensive or defensive player in the post area with or without the ball with his back to the basket. The post area includes the three second lane and the area three feet outside the lane lines. When an offensive player no longer presents his back to the basket, he is no longer a post player and the defensive forearm must come off. 
Offensive players should not be rewarded when they initiate contact with a legal defender. Most often, this occurs on drives to the basket. These plays should result in either a no call or, if egregious enough, an offensive foul. Number zero white drives to the basket while number 21 red legally moves to maintain his position. Number zero white initiates contact with number 21 red and the official correctly no calls this play. As you can see by the baseline replay, number zero white seeks out number 21 red instead of the basket. During the 2017-18 season, this type of play should result in either a no call or an offensive foul. This is another example of a legal defender being sought out by the offensive player. Number five red seeks out number five white who has maintained a legal guarding position. Number five red should not be rewarded for causing this contact. The official correctly no calls this play. On this play, the defender, number one black, has failed to maintain legal guarding position because he is partially beaten and the offensive player, number 45 white, was entitled to make a move directly to the basket. Unlike the previous plays, this should have been a defensive foul. The rules committee amended the screening rule this year to allow a screener to have the inside of his feet no wider than shoulder width apart. This allows for a slightly wider base when setting a screen. During the 2017-18 season, the officiating community will be focused on penalizing excessively wide screens. Number 41 white attempts to set a screen on number five blue. Number 41 white's feet exceed the screening limit. When contact occurs, this is a foul on number 41 white. At the beginning of this clip, number five blue sets a legal screen with the inside of his feet approximately shoulder width apart. In addition, he gave number zero gold a step to stop or change direction. Subsequently, number zero blue sets an illegal screen with his feet exceeding the screening limits. This should have been called an illegal screen on number zero blue. The Rules Committee is concerned with the increase in the number of hook and hold plays, or otherwise known as arm lock plays, occurring in our game. This deceptive action does not belong in our game. Officials will be taught to look for this type of action and penalize accordingly. At first blush, it looks like number zero red is being held by number 11 white. As you can see from the replay, Number zero red actually raises his left arm and arm locks number 11 white. In addition, number zero red holds with his right arm and then acts like he is being held. This type of arm lock play must be eliminated from our game. Number 15 white is defending number two gold during a try. As the shot is in the air, Number two gold locks the arm of number 15 white and throws him to the floor. Number two gold was correctly called for an offensive foul. Because of the leverage used by number two gold, this play could also be considered a flagrant one foul. This type of arm lock play must be eliminated from our game. Number two white is defending number one black on a throw in. Number one black runs into the arm of number two white, raises his left arm, and arm locks number two white. This makes it appear that number two white has fouled number one black. In addition, number one black leans back to make it appear that he is being held. This type of arm lock play must be eliminated from our game. 
The Rules Committee has established a type of foul known as a loose ball foul. This includes team control fouls which occur during a loose ball such as a fumble, deflection, or after the release of a ball for a try. This does not include team control fouls when the ball is being passed between teammates and there is no deflection. Number 5 White drives toward the free throw line. Number 25 Red defends the play and deflects the ball away. Subsequently, number 5 White fouls number 25 Red. In previous seasons, this was a team control foul and no free throws would be awarded. During the 2017-18 season, this is still a team control foul, but it will be considered a loose ball foul, and if the red team is in the bonus, they will be awarded free throws. Number three white is dribbling the ball, and number one blue deflects the ball away. Before number one blue can gain control of the ball, number three white fouls number one blue. During previous seasons, this was a team control foul on number three white, and no free throws would be awarded. During the 2017-18 season, this will still be a team control foul on number three white, but will be considered a loose ball foul, and if the blue team is in the bonus, free throws will be awarded. The Rules Committee has established two throw-in spots in the front court for all fouls and violations by the defense when the offense retains possession. All throw ins in the front court will use the line of demarcation shown in this diagram. If the foul or violation occurs inside the line of demarcation, the throw in will occur at a spot three feet outside the nearest lane line. If the foul or violation occurs outside the line of demarcation, the throw in will be at the nearest 28 foot hash. This includes following all charge timeouts to the offense. Please note, on deflections out of bounds by the defense in the front court, the ball will be inbounded at the actual spot where the ball went out of bounds. The Rules Committee has amended the shot clock rule. When a foul or violation is committed by the defense and the ball is to be inbounded in the front court, the shot clock will be reset to 20 seconds, or the time remaining on the shot clock, whichever is greater. This includes a kicked ball, which previously required a 15 second reset. This foul in the front court occurs with 13 seconds remaining on the shot clock. The shot clock will no longer be reset to 30 seconds. The new rule causes the shot clock to be reset to 20 seconds. This foul in the front court occurs with 22 seconds remaining on the shot clock. After the foul, the shot clock will remain at 22 seconds. Last season, the Rules Committee established that a defender, while in the restricted area, could legally wall up by establishing legal guarding position with both feet on the floor facing his opponent, jumping straight up in the air with his hands vertically raised within his vertical plane and attempt to block the shot. This play has added an exciting defensive play to the game. It is important to note that the defender must jump from position A and return to position A to adhere to the verticality rules and to be legal. This does not include movement caused by incidental contact. During last season's NCAA championship game, Number four black drives to the basket and is defended by number four white. Number four white legally walls up in the restricted area. This is a good no call by the official. Please note that number four white jumps from position A and lands in position A. Number four black drives to the basket and is defended by number 32 white. Number 32 white legally walls up in the restricted area. This is a good no call by the official. Please note that number 32 white jumps from position A and lands in position B. This defensive action is still legal, 
due to the fact that had there not been incidental contact by number four black, number 32 white would have landed in position A. Number one white drives to the basket and number 30 red defends the play. Number 30 red, a secondary defender just outside the restricted area, never initially establishes legal guarding position by having both feet on the floor facing his opponent. In addition, he jumps from position A to position B in attempt to make himself legal. This should have been called a defensive foul on number 30 red. Officials will be instructed to see if the defender establishes legal guarding position and whether the defender jumps from position A to position A in defending the play. When defenders jump from position A to position B, they should be called for a defensive foul unless there was incidental contact initiated by the offense which causes the defense to land elsewhere. Last season, the Rules Committee established an interpretation regarding the vertical cylinder and normal basketball moves. Let's review last year's rule. Rule 4, Section 38, Verticality. Article 1, Verticality applies to a legal position and also to both the offensive and defensive players. Some of the basic components of the principle of verticality are H. The offensive player, whether on the playing court or airborne, shall not clear out or cause contact that is not incidental. I. The defender may not belly up or use the lower part of his body or arms to cause contact outside his vertical plane. K. The offensive player must be allowed enough space to make a normal basketball play. The defense may not invade the vertical space of the offense and make illegal contact when the offensive player is attempting a normal basketball play. A normal basketball play by the offense was defined as attempting to shoot, pass, or start a dribble. An offensive player holding the ball may make a normal basketball play by moving the ball low or below his waist from one side to the other or by moving the ball high or above his shoulders from one side to the other. When an offensive player holding the ball at chest level or between his waist and his shoulders moves the ball from one side to the other, he is at risk of being called for an offensive player control foul when contact occurs. It is important to note that officials will be looking at the forearms of the offensive player. When an offensive player holding the ball moves the ball from one side to the other and his forearms are more vertical or up to the ceiling or down to the floor than horizontal parallel with the floor, this will be considered part of a normal basketball play. When the offensive player's arms are more horizontal or parallel with the floor than vertical, he will be considered to be clearing space and is at risk of an offensive foul. It is also important to note that if an offensive player is making a normal basketball play, any contact that is sufficient to be a foul must be a foul in the defense for invading the vertical cylinder of the offensive player. Please note, if the offensive player makes contact that is excessive or unnecessary, he still will be at risk of causing a flagrant one or flagrant two foul. The creation of the vertical cylinder for the offense was intended to allow the offensive player to have freedom of movement during a normal basketball play. This means that the defender cannot invade the vertical cylinder of the offense and make contact by crowding him while he is attempting to make a legal move. This year, 2017-18, the Rules Committee has amended the definition of a normal basketball move to not only allow an offensive player to begin to shoot, pass, or start a dribble, but to include allowing the offensive player enough room to pivot. This means that defenders will no longer be allowed to straddle a player's leg to prevent him from pivoting. Let's look at some plays. This is a classic example of a defender straddling the leg of the offensive player. 
Number 12 black defends number 23 white following a rebound. Number 23 white is pivoting on his left foot. Number 12 black closes the gap, straddles the leg of number 23 white, and causes the contact. When contact happens, the official correctly calls this a defensive foul for violating the cylinder and causing contact. This play will remain a defensive foul in 2017-18. Number 20 blue dribbles the ball into the front court. Number five white defends the play. Number five white is in a legal guarding position until he steps forward, closes the gap, straddles the leg of number 20 blue, and causes the contact. At this point, he is limiting number 20 blue's ability to pivot. When the displacing contact occurs, this will be called a defensive foul on number five white. Number 44 green catches the ball in the post and is double teamed by number 21 white and number 3 white. Number 3 white commits a defensive cylinder foul by closing the gap, straddling the leg of number 44 green and causing the contact. This should have been a defensive foul last season and will be called a defensive foul on number 3 white this season. Number two white dribbles into the front court and picks up his dribble. Number 20 blue and number two blue double team number two white. As number two white attempts to pivot, number two blue closes the gap, straddles the leg of number two white and causes contact. This was called an offensive foul last season. In 2017-18, this will be called a defensive foul for violating the vertical cylinder of number two white and not allowing number two white to make a normal basketball move. Number 32 white has the ball in the post and is attempting to pivot to the basket. Number five red defends the play. Number five red legally defends the play. He does not step into number 32 white or straddle the leg of number 32 white. Subsequently, number 32 white moves forward with a horizontal forearm and makes contact with the chin of number five red. This is a player control foul on number 32 white. There will be additional rules explained in the fall instructional video. We hope this summer training video assists you in your summer teaching opportunities with your players. Good luck this summer with your recruiting.